Our next order of business is H.R. 5406, the Helping Ensure Accountability, Leadership, and Trust in Tribal Health Care Act. This time I'd like to recognize the bill sponsor, Ms. Nome, for an opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Great Plains region is home to over 120,000 Native Americans who rely on the Indian Health Service for their health care. The region, which includes my home state of South Dakota, is home to some of the most rural and economically distressed tribal communities in the country. They face unimaginable poverty, substance abuse, and epidemic stress, uh, and rates of youth suicide are through the roof. Unfortunately, the IHS is a broken agency that is fundamentally incapable of helping tackle the most pressing health issues in Indian country. In 2010, before I came to Congress, then Senator Byron Dorgan conducted an investigation of the Great Plains region of IHS. He released a shocking report detailing serious financial problems, providers with expired licenses, employee theft of addictive pills by the thousands, and even babies being born on the floor of hospital bathrooms. Following the report, IHS never brought the kind of change that they promised. So last year, CMS terminated or threatened termination of its relationship with IHS hospitals in Nebraska and South Dakota for infractions ranging from failure to follow important basic procedures to washing surgical instruments by hand. After these deficiencies came to light, IHS abruptly closed the sole emergency room serving the Rosebud Sioux Tribe. It was simply too dangerous to treat patients there. IHS diverted patients to hospitals located over 50 miles away. This closure continued for seven months, and during that time, nine people died in ambulances while in transit to those other hospitals. And just last week, IHS announced that it would temporarily close its location in Rapid City. Um, it would be effective next Tuesday, and that now emergency patients would be sent across town to a private hospital, which will almost certainly be a force to absorb any extra cost. So we as members of Congress have tried to spend our way out of these problems. Congress increased the IHS budget almost every year since Senator Dorgan's report, exceeding the President's budget request twice. The IHS budget now sits at nearly $1 billion more than in 2010. Yet the problems are as serious as they've ever been. I believe that the IHS needs more funding, but money alone is simply not going to fix the problem. My Bipartisan Health Act contains sensible solutions like improving recruitment and retention of quality staff, eliminating barriers for voluntary medical and dental providers, and reforming critical funding formulas. Today, we consider a section of the Health Act that seeks tax parity between the IHS Student Loan Repayment Program and other similar programs. This provision is small in scope and cost, but it's critical because the IHS Student Loan Repayment Program is the agency's best recruitment tool for high-quality providers. This policy has been included in the President's budget request, and some of my Democratic colleagues have co-sponsored similar legislation this Congress. I urge my colleagues to support this provision. And finally, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for holding this markup. And I also want to thank the committee's health and tax staff. They've been amazing. Alyssa, Lisa, Emily, Barbara, and John for their work as we've developed this response to the health care crisis that's going on in Indian country. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I'll yield back. Uh, Dr. Davis, you're recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and I would move to strike the last word. I supported H.R. 546 and commend Representative Nome for its introduction. All of us know that the National Health Service Corps is one of the main programs and one of the main ways that we provide physicians and other personnel to what are called medically underserved and manpower shortage areas. Much of what we know as tribal areas fit this description and this criteria. And so I would certainly agree that the same treatment should apply to the Indian Health Service Scholarship and Loan Program as to the National Health Service Program. This, this, this legislation actually helps to correct an inequity that never should have existed. Again, I commend uh, Representative Nome for its introduction and support its passage.